Welcome back to Calculus 3. I'm Jeff Grove. Today we're going to talk about lines and planes in space. What is a line? Everyone knows the, the principle that two points determine a straight line. Let's suppose that here we have a point x0 in R3. That can also be thought of as a vector, given the position of that point. If we have some vector v pointing from x0 to another point on that line, then every other point x on the line can be thought of as merely the sum of x0 plus a rescaling of the vector v. In other words, the point x on the line, an arbitrary point x on the line, is equal to x0 plus a rescaling of the vector v. This, my friends, is the parametric form of a line. As you can see, if the vector x has coordinates x, y, z, and x0 has coordinates x0, y0, z0, then the equation x equals x0 plus tv, given the vector v equals a, b, c, will have the form x, y, z equals x0 plus t times a, y0 plus t times b, z0 plus t times c. This is equivalent to the three equations, x equals x0 plus t a, y equals y0 plus t b, and z equals z0 plus tc. This is a parametric curve, and this is a parameterization. Now, technically, there are two different spellings and two different pronunciations of that last word. There's parameterization and Parametrization. Both are correct. For example, let's suppose that we want to find the equation of the line that passes through 2, 3, 2 and the point 4, 3, 1. First, we'll choose x0 to be 2, 3, 2 and the vector v to be if this is p and this is q, it'll be the vector pq. We'll take q minus p, that'll be 2, 0, negative 1. It follows, then, that the equation of the line is given by x equals 2 plus 2t, two 3 plus 0t, and then 2 minus T. The equation of the line. One could take the equations x equals x0 plus at, y equals y0 plus bt, z equals z0 plus ct, and solve for t in each case. On the first one, t is going to be x minus x0 divided by a. You can solve for t in each of the other variables, provided a, b, and c are not zero, in which case you would have x minus x naught divided by a equals y minus y naught divided by b equals z minus z naught divided by c. These are called the symmetric equations for a line. Suppose in R3, 
by the way, the formula for a line that we've given so far works in Rn as well. Suppose we have a line given by x equals x naught plus t v. v is going to be a vector going in the direction of the line, and x naught is going to be the point, some point on that line. Let's suppose that we have some other point x1, and we would like to find the distance from x1 to the line. What we mean by that is the shortest distance. The distance between x1 and the point on the line that gives you the minimum distance. How can we find the distance? Well, it might not be what you expect. You could set this up as a minimization problem and solve it a la calculus 1. Instead, what we're going to do is look at the vector from the point x0 to the point x1. Now, if you were to project that onto the vector v, you'd have this projection onto v of the vector x0, x1. But this vector is the orthogonal complement on v of the vector x0, x1. And the norm, the length, of the orthogonal complement of x0, x1 is the distance. Exactly. <coughs> All we have to do is maybe simplify this formula. However, there's an even easier way to calculate the distance. from a point to a line. Here's your line. Here's your point x not on the line. And there's your vector v in the direction of the line. Let's let this be the point x1. This is the vector x not x1. And this is this distance, the length of this side is the distance. Suppose that this angle is called theta. Then is it not true that the sine of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse? But isn't it also true we have this formula that norm u cross v is is equal to norm u norm v sine theta, which means if the vectors u and v are x0, x1, and v, then what we have here is the norm of x0, x1 cross v over the norm of x0, x1 norm v. We can now solve this equation easily for the distance d, d, is going to be equal to the norm of x0, x1 cross v over the norm of v. Let's give this a shot. Find the distance from the line x equals, let's say, 3 plus 2t, 4 minus t, and 1 plus 3t to the point x1 given by, let's say, 4, 
3, 2. To solve this problem, we will need a vector v in the direction of the line. The vector v is the coefficient of t, so that's going to be 2, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 1, 3. We need a point x0 on the line. Any point will do. Why not just set t equal to 0 and end up with the point 3, 4, 1? Then the vector x0, x1 is calculated by subtracting the coordinates of x1 minus the coordinates of x0. That gives you 1, negative 1, 1. From here, we need to calculate the cross product. Since they're stacked this way, we'll calculate v cross x0, x1. After all, the original formula had these in the reverse order, but it's inside of a norm. If you reverse the order of a cross product, you just generate a negative. But that negative inside of the norm will disappear, so it won't matter. So v cross x0, x1, let's see, we get a negative 1 minus negative 3. That's 2. We get a preemptive minus here. 2 minus 3 gives you negative 1. Switching the sign gives you positive 1. Negative 2 minus negative 1 gives you negative 1. Now, the norm of v cross x0, x1 will be the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 1. The norm of v is the square root of 4 plus 9 plus 1. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 4 is 14. We get the square root of 14. The distance, then, is the square root of 6 over the square root of 14. You can see that a 2 will cancel here. And then rationalizing the denominator by multiplying by root 7 over root 7 gives you the square root of 21 divided by 7. Now I would like to talk about planes in R3. If you have some plane in R3, they'll have some point x0, and if n is a vector that is normal to the plane, that means orthogonal to all the tangent vectors in the plane, if you choose any other point x, in the plane, then the vector from x0 to x1 will lie in the plane, which means it will be orthogonal to the vector n. Two vectors are orthogonal if and only if their dot product is 0. I give you the equation of a plane. This gives you a lot of geometric information about what is going on in the construction of a plane. If x minus x0 is a vector that lies in the plane for any point x in the plane, if you dot that with a normal vector of the plane, you must get 0 because they are orthogonal. But this equation is a constraint on the variables x, y, and z that are the coordinates of the vector x. One constraint on three variables leaves you with two degrees of freedom. You end up with two degrees of wiggle room, say x and y. If you choose x and y, the value of z will be determined by this constraint. Since you have two degrees of wiggle room, that gives you a two-dimensional object embedded in a three-dimensional space, a surface. And in particular, this surface is flat and is a plane. If n is the vector abc, x0, the point x0, y0, z0, and x is the variable vector x, y, z, then the equation of the plane 0 equals n dot x minus x0 has the form 0 equals a times
times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught. This can be rearranged so that we can write this as ax plus by plus cz equals some constant d after you combine all the constants here. So this is a standard form for a plane. One thing that you should notice about this equation for the plane is that the coefficients of x, y, and z are the coordinates of the normal vector a, b, and c. I give you the equation of a plane. One thing that is a little less satisfying to me about this form of the equation of a plane is that it doesn't have as much geometric information staring me in the face. There is some geometric information, just not as much. So for example, let's suppose that we have a point on the plane given by 4, 3, 1, and we have a normal vector to the plane given by negative 1, 3, 4. Then the equation of the plane is negative 1 times x minus 4 plus 3 times y minus 3 plus 4 times z minus 1. How do you know whether or not two planes are parallel? Well, of course, we don't want them to intersect, but an easy way to tell is to look at their normal vectors in 1 and in 2. These planes are parallel if and only if their normal vectors are parallel. Planes are orthogonal if their normal vectors are orthogonal. Suppose we have the planes 2x plus 3y minus z equals 5, and let's say 4x plus 6y minus 2z equals 7. These planes are parallel. The normal vector to the first plane is 2, 3, negative 1. And to the second plane, we have a normal vector of 4, 6, negative 2, which is twice n1, and therefore n1 is parallel to n2, and that means that the planes are parallel. Note that in the equation of the plane, the exponents on x, y, and z are equal to 1. If these variables were squared or cubed, you would expect the surface to be bent. But since they're to the power 1, the surface will be flat, which is exactly what you need for a plane. It is well known that three points determine a plane. So let's find the equation. I shouldn't say z, I should say m. Since there could be more than one equation for which the plane satisfies, all you have to do is multiply the equation of the plane through by a non-zero constant. And that gives you another version of the same plane. Find an equation of the plane passing through 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 3, and 3, 0, 1. We'll call this A, B, and C. So if I have three points, A, B, and C, then what I can do is I can find the vector A, B, and the vector A, C. These two vectors will lie in the plane, since these three points are in the plane. We can construct then a normal vector by taking the vector AB and crossing it with AC. That vector must be normal to the plane. From there, we just use our formula, 0 equals n dot 
x minus x naught, where x is a variable vector and x naught is a specific point on the plane, say the coordinates of the point A. The vector AB is 1 minus 2, 0 minus 1, 3 minus 0. And the vector AC is 3 minus 2, 0 minus 1, and 1 minus 0. The normal vector will be the cross product of these two, which I've stacked specifically to make it easy. So we get negative 1 minus negative 3. That's a positive 2. I'll preemptively put a minus because we need a minus on the middle cofactor of a cross product. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative negative makes a positive 4. And then we'll have positive 1 minus negative 1. That's 2. Actually, note that I can choose my normal vector to be any scalar multiple of this it will still be normal. So just for sake of simplifying the equation of the plane that comes, I'm going to take one half of what is above. The equation for the plane is 0 equals 1 times x minus 2 plus 2 times y minus 1 plus 1 times z minus, minus one. 0. And yes, we could simplify that, but we've done the hard part. So, given three points, how do you find the equation of the plane that goes between them? First, you find two vectors in the plane by subtracting pairs of points, and then you take the cross product of those to yield the normal. You can take any scalar multiple of that and it will work. Then we use that formula, 0 equals n dot x minus x naught, to just write down the equation of the plane. How do you find the distance from a point to a plane? Suppose we have some plane which has a normal vector n and some point x naught. And we have some other point over here. We'll call that x1. Notice we can form the vector between x naught and x1. Now the distance. The distance is thought of as the orthogonal distance down to the plane. But if you project the vector x naught x1 onto the normal, which I'll just call proj projection, just for short, then the distance should be the norm of that projection onto the normal of the point, the vector x naught x1. I give you the distance formula between a point and a plane. But we can simplify this a little bit. This is going to be the norm of n dot x1 minus x naught divided by the norm of n squared times n. Now, scalars can come out of norms in absolute value. So we get the absolute value of n dot x1 minus x naught divided by the norm of n squared. That leaves n still inside of the norm. But that cancels. The distance between a point and a plane, then, is the absolute value of the normal vector dotted with x1 minus x naught where x1 is the point in question and x0 is an arbitrary point on the plane, divided by the norm of the normal vector. 
Another way to look at that is a times x1 minus x0 plus b times y1 minus y0 plus c times z1 minus z0 all over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Different versions of the same thing, the distance between a point and the plane. For example, let's find the distance between the point x1, which we'll say has coordinates 3, 2, 3, and the plane 0 equals 3x plus 2y plus z. Now, this plane, and it is a plane because the powers on x, y, and z are all 1. That means it's flat. This plane passes through the origin. 0, 0, 0 is a point on this plane. So why don't we choose x0 to be the point 0, 0, 0? Then the vector, then the distance will be the absolute value of the normal vector here is 3, 2, 1. It'll be 3 times 3 minus 0 plus 2 times 2 minus 0 plus 1 times 3 minus 0 all over the norm of the normal vector, which is 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 4, square root of 14. Simplifying, we have 9 plus 3 is 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 over the square root of 14. We may, of course, rationalize the denominator. Example. Find the distance between x1, which we'll have as 2, 1, 3, and the plane, let's say 3 equals 2x plus y plus 5z. Notice that the normal vector is the vector 2, 1, 5. We have everything except for the point x0. We need one point that lies on this plane. And try to be lazy. Try to choose something simple, something not too complicated. How about 1, 1, 0? If x is 1 and y is 1, that gives you 3 already, so you have to make z equal to 0 to make the equation true. The distance, then, is the absolute value of, remember how you do this, it's n dot x1 minus x0. So it's going to be 2 times 2 minus 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 1, already thinking 0 in my brain, plus 5 times 3 minus 0, all over the norm, which is the square root of 25, plus 1 is 26, plus 4 is 30. So what does that amount to? 2 minus 1 is 1, times 2 is 2. 2 and 15 makes 17 over the square root of 30. And that is the distance between the point and the plane. How do you find the distance between parallel planes? Suppose we have a plane with some point x0 and a normal vector n. If you choose any point x1 on the second plane, 
To find the distance, all you have to do is find the distance between this point x1 and the other plane. In other words, it's the same formula. The absolute value of n dot x1 minus x0 over the norm of n, same as before. Any point x1 on the second plane will do. So for example, let's suppose I want to find the distance between, say, 3 equals 2x plus y plus 4z and 5 equals 2x plus y plus 4z. And no, the distance is not 2. You can see that these planes are parallel because they both have normal vector equal to 2, 1, 4. Even if the normal vectors were scalar multiples of each other, these planes would still be parallel. What we need is a point on each plane. One point will do. And don't try to be too creative about it. Try to be lazy. So 0, 3, 0 would work. And on the second plane, how about 0, 5, 0? So now you can see that we'll have 2 times 0. We'll have 1 times 5 minus 3 plus 4 times 0 over the norm, which is the square root of 16 plus 1 is 17 plus 4 is 21. So the distance between these two planes is 2 divided by the square root of 21. How do we find the angle? between intersecting planes. We're in R3 again. We'll have a couple planes. These planes will intersect each other on a straight line. Now, let's suppose one plane has normal N1 and the other plane has normal n2. Every pair of planes actually has two angles. There's angle 1 and angle 2. Which one is the angle between the planes? And the answer is, by convention, we always take the acute one. So the smaller of the two, the acute angle, will represent the angle between the two planes. How do you find that? Well, you can find the angle between the normal vectors. If the planes are parallel, the normal vectors will point in the same direction or in opposite directions. But what if the normal vector, normal 2, points in the other direction? Won't the angle between N1 and N2 then be the larger of the two angles? Here's a fix for this. We know the cosine between two vectors can be calculated as n1 dot n2 over norm n1, norm n2. But the two angles are supplementary. It follows then that if you take the absolute value, you'll always get a positive value, which will give you the smaller of the two. If you happen to get a negative, that just gives you a, an obtuse one. It has the same reference angle, the reference angle being the smaller of the two. You can always get the reference angle then by just taking the absolute value. So I give you a formula for the cosine of the angle between two planes. All you have to do is take the inverse cosine. Since the right-hand side is always positive, that must give you an acute angle. Find the angle.
integral between, say, 3 equals 2x plus y plus 4z and 4 equals negative x plus y plus 3z. In this case, the first normal is the vector 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, and the second normal is negative 1, 1, 3. It follows then that the cosine is equal to the dot product divided by the product of the norms in absolute value. The dot product is negative 2 plus 1 plus 12 divided by 16 and 4 is 20, the square root of 21. 9 plus 1 plus 1 square root 11. So we end up with 13 11. divided by the square root of 21 square root of 11. In order to calculate the angle, we need to take the inverse cosine. My calculator gives me about 44 31. degrees. How do you find the line of intersection? of two planes. Two planes will intersect each other on a straight line. I want to know how to find the equation of that line. Remember the equation of a line is x equals x naught plus tv, where x naught is just some point on the line and v is a vector in the direction of the line. How do I find this vector v? The answer is, if I take the normal of one plane and the normal of the other plane, those will both be orthogonal to the vector v. In other words, v will be the cross product of n1 and n2. We'll just plug that into here after we find any suitable point common to both planes. Find the line of intersection of, let's say, 3 equals 2x plus y minus 2z, 6 equals 3x plus 2y minus z. Now, the first normal is 2, 1, negative 2, and the second normal is 3, 2, negative 1. The vector v in the direction of the line is the cross product, which I've conveniently stacked these vectors for the purpose of. You get negative 1 minus negative 4 is 3. We'll preemptively put a minus in. You get negative 2 minus negative 6. That's 6 minus 2, which is 4. We'll get negative 4, because you always switch the sign on the middle cofactor. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. So the vector v in the direction of the line is 3, negative 4, 1. All we need is a point x naught that lies on both planes. Now try not to get too terribly creative here. How about 0, 3, 0, and 0, 3, 0? This does satisfy both of these equations. It's the simplest point I could find, so I chose it. Of course, the equation of the line is x equals x naught plus tv. So the vector x will be, let's see, the coordinates of x naught, 0 plus t times 3. 
3 plus t times negative 4, and then 0 plus t times 1. So this is the equation of the line of intersection of these two planes.